DaVinci Resolve 20 has just come out and these brand new features may have been requested since the early 2000s. I'm just kidding. That was a joke. That was a bit of an exaggeration, but we are going to jump in today and take a look at one of the new features in DaVinci Resolve that has been widely requested for a very long time, and that is DaVinci Resolve's new keyframe editor. So let's go ahead and check this thing out in DaVinci Resolve and see we, how we can use this. All right, so I just have some footage here in my timeline of a wedding that happened. And, uh, you know, we just have a blur on it for uh, just, you know, privacy reasons. But what I am going to do here is we are going to play around with the new keyframe editor. All right, so how do we boot it up? How do we use it? DaVinci Resolve has two new keyframe buttons. There, one can be found at the top right here, which launches the keyframe kind of graph type thing, as well as the, the other button is down here, which will be able to view our keyframes in a second, the keyframe tray. So let's go ahead and just close this for a second. And let's go ahead and put some keyframes on our clip. So let's just say we wanted to zoom in some more on our clip all throughout. We can actually come over here to whatever frame this is, set another keyframe, that will make it really zoomed in again. You know, the old way of doing keyframes was very tedious coming in here and you know, right clicking, ease in, and then going back to the other one, right clicking, ease out. It might, when you go back on the arrow, it might go to a different video clip or something like that. So this keyframe editor is a massive improvement in DaVinci Resolve. And in my opinion, the biggest improvement coming from DaVinci Resolve 20. So if we boot up this keyframes panel and now you're going to see a couple different things in here. If you haven't used this before, we're going to click on the three dots. I want to make sure that snap keyframes to grid and show curve tooltips is selected just for this guy. Not saying you guys need to use that. Um, but we're going to have quite a few options here. We have timeline, source tape, uh, source clip. Um, if you're working with different footage, you can switch between these. Um, but for right now, timeline is going to work for us. And let me just go ahead and open up the keyframes panel again. And we are going to play around with our keyframes here. So there's many different options for... The way that you're seeing the keyframes, you can either see them in this way, kind of like how it's displayed on the clip over here, or we can switch it to the keyframes curves. This is what you'd be familiar with if you jumped into the Fusion page, which is super customizable and awesome. We have some tools up here switching between the pointer, which we can use to select points. So just selected a point. We can use the hand mode to move around. If we're zoomed in a bit, we can move around and we can use the add keyframe button to actually add keyframes into our clip. So let's say we wanted something down here. We can click and drag it and move it around. And that is totally cool. That's something that we could kind of do before in if we were accessing our clip they don't even give us the option anymore it looks like uh to use the other keyframe manager all right so now let's actually go into the editing keyframes and seeing why this is so cool 
All right, so DaVinci Resolve had a curve editor before. They don't have it anymore, but you could edit keyframes just like this if we had the pointer tool, and there were buttons for ease in and ease out. But the cool part about this now is that we can actually come up here and not only adjust our keyframes, so now we have that zoom adjusted, but now we can adjust the handles and they don't move all over the place like they did previously. We can actually undo that and if we hold down shift now, this is something they have included on the fusion page before, but not on the edit page. Now we can actually drag from side to side. We don't have to worry about our keyframes moving all over the place, and we can get some really nice and smooth curves here on the graph. This will just do something crazy, but let me just show you how this kind of looks. Zooms out, zooms back in, and we have our nice blur, of course, and then it zooms in all the way at the top. Now, this not only works for a middle frame, but we can also do this at the top. If you want to go this to go side to side, we can hold shift and just click and drag out. Or if we grab onto the track and let's say we want to start angling it downward, just go ahead, hold shift. And now it will only go out from side to side from that portion up and down, side to side, diagonal, it'll hold it steady so that way it doesn't go anywhere. Now, this is super useful because before we had to jump into something like Fusion in order to do this or pretend that we're super precise, just dragging the keyframes all over the place just to have them jump up and down all over the place. It was a total, total mess. Now, there is one problem that I have realized with this keyframe editor that they still haven't fixed from before. Blackmagic, we love you for coming out with this brand new keyframe editor, and we know you just came out with it, but there is one issue that we will go over here in a second. One of the last things I want to touch up on is these three buttons over here. We have the detail zoom, which is just going to zoom out to different portions of the keyframes. This is going to zoom in on the stuff we have going on here, and this is going to zoom out, zoom out all the way. Now, if you want a bigger view here, um, you can actually move around your keyframe editor and have access to both the parameter section and this top part here as well. So like I was saying before, there was an option to make it so that way we can view only the keyframes that we have on our clip or view some other parameters. So I have this box checked off here for display parameters with keyframes. If we select this, we can actually see all the different parameters that we can keyframe here. And then we also have the option which I had on before, which is display only selected parameters. So if I just want to come over to the Gaussian blur and let's just do the horizontal strength and now we have just should be just the horizontal strength on here so now we can see that we can uncheck all the boxes for video and we have just the horizontal strength on here not sure why that is popping up. Oh, I guess it's because we still have this selected as well. Okay, so we just have horizontal strength selected. Now it's in both boxes. We can also get access to something like this if we X out our keyframe editor and come down to the keyframe tray right here. And this is a quick way to make new keyframes as well as jump to the next keyframe. 
Mm. Beautiful touch, black magic. Absolutely wonderful. We love it. But like I said, there is just one problem. In order to go over this problem, we just went ahead and removed the zoom off our video. And now we'll get into what the issue is. So here's the issue. When we add an open FX um, effect to our video, like let's just say um, Gaussian Blur was a good example of this, but since we already have it on the clip, let's just do a transform. Okay, so let's take our transform, drag it onto our clip, and make some different keyframes. We'll do rotate, we'll do width, we will come in the middle here and just keyframe them again, switch up the different things for these, the different parameters, and bring back up the keyframe panel. Now let's head in here and let's go ahead and just boot up our full window. And we can come here and come to selected parameters, uncheck the Gaussian blur, all of transform, that's what we'll do. And we'll come in the transform and do the same thing here. All right, so maybe we just want the uh, width and the rotate. So let's just bring these in and this is cool. Okay, so everything's going good. We can adjust our keyframes as we would normally. And, you know, we can still adjust the angles of all these different curves and smooth them out nice and nice. And we could do the same with the width if we wanted to. But here is the problem. This works great for an open effects um, tool. But what Blackmagic didn't include if we come back over to the effects tab and let's say we're working with something like a title, which you probably be using a lot because we use these in DaVinci all the freaking time. Oh, look what I typed out there. So let's just say that we want this to be bigger on the screen. We would keyframe the size. We come over to maybe the middle and that's where you would want it to get bigger. You know, you'd have all your effects on here, whatever you want. If you want to change the color, go ahead. But here's the problem. When we now open up the keyframes panel and we come down here and we go to selected we don't see any option for our, our text plus node. And that's an issue because we use these things all the time. Now we could just jump into the fusion page and edit it like we used to, but that's no fun. We want to have something on the edit page. And as of right now, there isn't anything that we can do for this on the edit page unless you actually come into your text plus node and you go over to the settings tab. Anything on here is going to be keyframeable and show up in that keyframe assistant right there. So if we keyframe the zoom and then we keyframe the zoom again, make it nice and big. And now we come over to the keyframes. Now we can see that now it is here. So we can go ahead, open up the parameters, see if we can get this up on the screen. And now we can go ahead and just check off the zoom here. So we have the two zooms and now we can adjust this text plus node. But if you wanted to do anything outside of the settings tab, you're going to be pretty much out of luck for now, which is pretty 
unfortunate. So, I don't know about you guys. Hopefully, Black Magic will include this feature in the future updates of maybe even DaVinci Resolve 20, the final update. Maybe they'll have it. Or the next beta updates, maybe in there. That would be great. But just another feature request. I know this just came out. They did a killer jab on DaVinci Resolve 20 overall. So many cool features that weren't in here before. So we would just love to see this in here. Um, if you guys would also love to see this effect, make sure to leave a comment down below. Black Magic, please come out with this effect for fusion effects in DaVinci on the edit page, please. But if you guys haven't by now, make sure you guys like and subscribe. It really helps out this channel. And I'm going to be coming out with some more really, really awesome things for you guys. So you're going to want to go out and check out that description down below. If you want to become a DaVinci Resolve master and really upgrade your skills, there's going to be some cool stuff down there. I don't know, maybe some like courses to level up your skills as well as some group calls some single calls you know coaching stuff where we can really help you guys max out your skill level in davinci get the best bang for your buck get get your skill up guys you know we're gonna help you i'm gonna help you guys crush it okay so click that link down below might be a call might be signing up for something you know help you guys out go ahead click that link all right, see you guys in the next video.